today's extreme athletes, modern thrill seekers, and pro rescuers push themselves to the limits like never before. A few years ago, I was caught in an avalanche. Risking life and limb to scale mountains, free dive oceans, and tackle any challenge in between. But behind every death-defying adventure is the highly specialized gear needed to survive and conquer the most extreme environments. People think a surfboard's just a board and fins, but it's actually an engineering masterpiece. And behind every life-saving tool are the revolutionary designers that invent it all. It's a little bit like James Bond's Q Branch meets outdoor adventure gear. They spend months, even years, researching, developing, and risking their own lives to put their theories to the ultimate test in the most dangerous conditions. Because if gear fails, people get hurt. But when it succeeds, anything is possible. This is Adventure Lab. With a top elevation of 11,000 feet, Mammoth Mountain is home to California's highest ski resort. It's also base camp for adventure gear specialist Scott McGuire. After a decade of adventuring around the world, I ended up working at the North Face, where I was the director of equipment. Scott now runs his own consulting firm, solving critical design problems for some of the biggest brands in outdoor equipment. You know, the golden age of modern gear design started in the 50s and 60s. A lot of the foundational companies we see today were born out of users at that point in time. Adventurers themselves in need of high quality gear to survive whatever nature had in store. And the Avalanche airbag is the perfect example. These inflatable twin buoys protect you in the rush of snow. The trigger contains a nine millimeter blank that detonates a pressurized nitrogen canister. 15 pounds of force. An instant 150 liters of additional surface area that can make you larger and thereby float the surface of an avalanche. A fact unexpectedly discovered in Europe in the 1970s. There was an Austrian forest supervisor who had gone out and shot a deer and was skiing back to his lodge with the deer on his shoulders and he triggered an avalanche. The avalanche comes to a stop and he's on the surface. What the forest supervisor had discovered was effectively the science of inverse segregation. Inverse segregation is a law of physics in which larger particles work their way to the surface while smaller particles settle to the bottom. And as the snow moves, you're gonna see that larger object surface to the top. Though the statistics are highly controversial, it's estimated that a deployed airbag could potentially save more than half of those who might perish in an avalanche, which is the reason the Mammoth Ski Patrol invested in airbag packs for the 2014 season. A few years ago, I was caught doing control work seed cutting. And the next thing I know, I was partially buried in an avalanche and hit some trees. Having had that experience on those days where the avi danger is higher, it's just one more thing that makes you feel a little more comfortable. The airbag packs are designed to haul all the gear Ski Patrol needs for an emergency rescue situation, including med packs, a shovel, and an avalanche probe. There's nothing wrong with the way that this pack is set up. But in talking to the Ski Patrollers about their packs, Scott spots a problem. A lot of people at first were putting their probes in the pack without their extra sleeve. And when it goes in there, and we get snow and ice in there, and we try and pull these out to assemble them, they're frozen shut. But the probes, they were doing something that was unnecessary because of bad design. The perception was it wasn't a problem. The reason why it's so critical to have quick access to a probe is after an avalanche, the probe is what you're going to use to insert into the snow and to test to see if that's the right spot to dig. You have a very, very small window of time. Your survival rate drops increasingly after 15 minutes. And if something like your probe is frozen and you have to fumble with your gear, that's not an option. The time and effort lost to an accessory like an extra probe sleeve presents Scott with a crucial design challenge back at the lab. The main detail we want to focus on is what's going on with the probes. And with the sleeve. They are saying they were getting enough snow and moisture down from the top and it was causing the probe to freeze together. That's something we need to solve. Let's take a look at this. If I'm here, and I want to be able to take my, you know, Maybe the solution is to actually have the probe at the bottom. At the bottom, that way I don't have to take as much of my pack off. Yeah, and they'd actually not have to take all the straps off too. But what we're really talking about is, what's the quickest, easiest, safest way for a patroller or a guide with cold hands and wind, ice, and snow conditions to be able to get a probe in and out? Athletes of this caliber, and they're going out and they're pushing the envelope constantly. They're on that edge, both physically, mentally, and the conditions they're in. Gear failures could mean loss of life. It's absolutely essential that their gear is just as good and just as strong as their own mental capacity to be able to succeed. Witness firsthand how these dedicated designers solve crucial gear problems to help adventurers and pros break records, push further, and save lives. It all starts at Adventure Lab.